So you definitely could feel the tension in the room. And CBS News from, Chief White House Correspondent White Nancy House Cordes officials. was one of just 11 reporters called on to ask a question at the high stakes press conference. Nancy Cordes, <coughs> CBS. I didn't know uh, for sure that I would get called on. You never really can be sure who's on the president's list. Have you spent time thinking about what it would mean for your legacy, which you've worked decades to build, if you stay in the race despite the concerns that voters say they have. I'm not in this for my legacy. I'm in this to complete the job I started. The president answered Nancy's question without a stumble, unlike the very first question of the night when he mixed up Veep Kamala Harris with Donald Trump. Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. What was the reaction in the room when he made that mistake? I definitely clocked it and I thought, oh, wow, this is sure to get a reaction uh, online and elsewhere. And sure enough, within minutes, it was all over social media. Just watch the reaction from members of the president's cabinet in the front row. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump. Cabinet of cringe goes one headline. No surprise, Donald Trump pounced, mocking the flub. Great job, Joe. Biden was asked to respond to Trump as the press conference ended. Donald Trump is using that to mock your age and your memory. Listen to him. So overall, how did he do? Reaction has been mixed. Nothing changed after that press conference. I thought the president was incredibly strong. He was very forceful. He definitely bought himself some more time. It was competent, but it was not compelling. There wasn't that breakthrough, nonstop, presence that would lead people to unsee what they saw at the debate. There are reports today that a high powered group of party leaders, so-called super friends, including Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, are sitting down with the president this weekend for a critical meeting. Somewhat of a mini intervention. What they want to hear from the president is what's the plan going forward? The strategy is, is off kilter. It's not working. What happens next is really tough conversations with that inner circle around Biden and his family. We've had some discussions over the past few days with your press secretary about the question of health exams. And you said you take a cognitive test every day in this job. Are you open to taking another physical or test before the election? I'm tested every single day about my neurological capacity to do decisions I make every day. It came up again during an interview with Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. I don't think that it hurt, to be honest, but at the end of the day, you know, I, so you I think, think that he should take a cognitive test? I don't test. think it would hurt. So what's a cognitive test actually like? To find out, Inside Edition enlisted 80-year-old okay. Leonard Zimmerman to give it a shot. It's being administered by neuropsychologist Dr. Sanam Hafiz. 1A, 2. Do I draw the arrow like that? I want you to copy this drawing as accurately as you can. And that looks so good. Tell me the name of this animal. It's a lion. Tell me the name of this animal. Rhinoceros. Tell me the name of this Camel. animal. Here, I'd like you to draw a clock, and I want you to set the time 10 past 11. How did our friend Leonard over here do? So, I have to tell you that technically he failed. Ah. Because he was supposed to have gotten a 26 out of 30, and he got a 22 out of 30. You were able to hold a conversation, you were able to remember a lot of things, but when we gave you very specific items, you like failed to meet things. You failed to meet some of the criteria. Well, we all know how Leonard did, but how about the president? That concludes tonight's press conference. Thank you.